Okay, here's SAC 204, problem number three. Please pause the uh, screen cam presentation and uh, read it. I'm going to go ahead and pop up a diagram of the situation. Uh, we've got uh, four electrons, each one at the corner of a square of side length. Um, one centimeter, and we're asked to find the uh, acceleration that any one of them experiences due to the electric field due to the other ones. They want us to find the electric field first at a particular location. I'll, I'll find it at the location of this one, and then use that to uh, get the uh, acceleration of that electron. So I want to find the uh, electric field right there. I like to find the electric field at an empty point in space, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, move that charged particle out of the picture for a while. Let's try putting it over there. And uh, I want to find the electric field at uh, this point right here. I'll call it point P due to uh, the presence of uh, these other particles. Okay, there's going to be at point P there's going to be an electric field due to uh, this charged particle over here. I'll call it number one in this direction. Call that E1, and I got that exactly wrong. This is a, a negatively charged particle, so the electric field will actually be toward it. Negatively charged particle creates an electric field directed toward itself. So let's uh, fix that up. That's the point. I want to find the electric field. One contribution due to particle number one is going to be that right there. I'll call it E1. And then this particle will create an electric field toward it. i call it uh, particle number two. And I'll call it its electric field E2. And then this particle causes an electric field directly toward it, which uh, is going to be right through the center of the square. It's at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to either that direction or that direction. I'm going to call it E3, where I'm, I'm designating this one as uh, particle number 3. Now E1, the electric field at point P, due to charge particle number 1, which is an electron, so a negatively charged particle is going to be given as Coulomb's law for the electric field. Call this uh, side length A. I think I'll switch that to, to D since we're looking for an acceleration of the problem. Let's call that side length D. got uh, kq over r squared is a generic expression or kq over d squared for the case at hand. So I'm using Coulomb's law for the electric field. kq over r squared is the electric field in magnitude. Um, and indeed, that's what I'm going for. E1, I want the magnitude of it. I use the magnitude of the charge there. And it's just going to be 8.99 times 10 to the ninth newton meter squared per coulomb squared. All right, times the magnitude of the charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the like 1.60. Keep three sig figs here. Times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and then all that has to be divided by the d squared, where uh, d is given as 0.01 meters. And uh, when I evaluate that, I get 14.5 
18 point three eight times ten to the minus six, which is the same thing as micro newtons per coulomb. Fourteen point three eight micro newtons per coulomb for E one. Now E two is being caused by the same kind of charged particle at the exact same distance from point P. So E2 in magnitude has got to be equal to E1. Notice we get the direction taken care of in the diagram, so I'm just dealing with magnitude. So E2 is also 14.38 micronewtons per coulomb. I'm carrying one extra sig fig in these intermediate results. E3, on the other hand, is different. It is the same charged particle, but we've got a, a different distance here. So uh, let's uh, get the, I, I guess we've got to find out what that distance is first. So let's get that distance. This distance right there, I think I'll call that uh, R3. And uh, from Pythagorean's theorem, R3 is going to be the square root of d squared plus d squared, which is the square root of 2d squared or square root of 2 times d, square root of 2 times the point oh one zero zero meters. I think, I think I'll just leave it like that, actually, uh, and, and work with it in terms of symbols. We'll substitute that in later. So... <coughs> E3 is K, Q3, they're all the same charge, Q, uh, divided by R3 squared, which is K, Q over square root of 2, D, all squared. E3 is uh, square root of 2 squared is, a, is 2, and that's in the denominator, so I got 1 half kq over d squared. I um, might recognize that as just 1 half of what e1 was. Uh, it's a good idea to remind myself, and I'm just getting the magnitude of e3. The direction was taken care of in the diagram, so I should just use the magnitude of the charge. Uh, so it'll be one half of this. We better come out with about 7.2. But uh, I think I'll go ahead and substitute. It'll be a check on my evaluation of uh, E1 and E2 as well. So that's 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs all divided by 0 0.0100 meters squared and that evaluates to 7.192 which does indeed look like half of the value for E1 and E2 micronewtons per coulomb. So I got uh, the three contributions to the electric field. That's the location P at point P. And now I got to add those together like vectors. 
my uh, normal way would be uh, break everything up into X and Y components, add the X components, add the Y components, and then put them back together. But here I see uh, E1 and E2 are equal in magnitude. So if I just add those two together, I get something, I'll call it E12, which if uh, these two sides are equal, right triangle, these two angles have to be equal. That's 45 degrees. It's going to be in the same exact direction as E3. So if I just add E1 and E2 together first. I get a vector in the same exact direction as E3. And then add an E1 and E3, E12 and E3 is trivial. Because uh, when you add two vectors that are both in the same direction, all you have to do is add the magnitudes to get the magnitude of the resultant vector, which is going to be in that same direction as the uh, original two. So my plan is to uh, go ahead and do the vector addition problem for E1 and E2. And then uh, just add that to E3 separately. Should make things go a little bit faster. So working off of uh, this diagram, I get, uh, by Pythagorean theorem, E12 in magnitude is square root of E1 squared plus E2 squared. Um, but uh, E2 is equal to E1. I think it'll take less time to evaluate if I take advantage of that. So that's uh, square root of E1 squared plus E1 squared, since they're equal in magnitude. And therefore, the magnitude of E12 is it's, uh, 2 E1 squared inside the square root. So that'll be the square root of 2 times the square root of E1 squared, which is just E1. And I could go ahead and uh, evaluate that. That's the square root of 2 times 14.38 micronewtons per coulomb. Or E12 in magnitude is 20.34 micronewtons per coulomb. All right, then the plan is to add E12 and E3. So we got a little vector. I'll do a little vector addition diagram for that one. You got E3 and E12. Both in the same exact direction. And I'll call the uh, resultant uh, just E, the total E that we're looking for. So this is E, running all the way down there, E itself is uh, E in magnitude, E, I'll call it E3 plus E12, the easiest kind of vector addition problem when they're both in the same exact direction. So that's equal to 7.192 micronewtons per coulomb plus 20.34 micronewtons per coulomb. And I get 27.53 for that. micronewtons per coulomb for the total electric field and it is down and to the left. Alright, then uh, for the uh, electron in question uh, 
that's uh, this guy. We put that at point P now. And with it at point P, it experiences a force. See, it's a negatively charged particle. The electric field is down and to the left, so it'll experience a force up and to the right, exactly away from the center of the square. Can, uh, I think I'll just put that in there as a bunch of dotted lines and lightly, so not really part of the free body diagram. Here's the free body diagram itself. And uh, as a result of the force in that direction, we'll experience an acceleration in that direction. And we can write, looking at that free body diagram, some of the forces uh, in the upper right direction. Let's go ahead and get that force first. So F itself in magnitude is Q times E, uh, which is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Again, I'm not putting an algebraic sign on there because I've established the direction. The sign helps us with the direction, but I've already established it's up and to the right. That was because of the electric field, but if you look also, it's being repelled by these three negatively charged particles, so we would expect it to be up and to the right. So multiply that times the electric field, 27.53 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons per coulomb. And I get for the, the force in magnitude 4.4 times 10 to the minus 24th. I'm ready to apply uh, Newton's laws. Now that I know what that force is, I'll go some of the forces in the up and to the right direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the up and to the right direction. So F, the only force that we've got in the problem is MA, where A is F over M, which is going to be equal to the 4.40 times 10 to the minus 24th. Newtons, what a minuscule force, but we've got a very tiny mass for the electron. 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So we actually get a, a rather huge acceleration. A turns out to be in magnitude 4.83 times 10 to the 6 meters per second squared. Uh, direction up and to the right in this picture. Uh, could have picked this one. That would have been down and to the right, down and to the left. So we want to be able to say the answer in terms of uh, the given configuration. So I'll just say away from the center of the square. You could say away from the opposite corner as well. But the vector A is our final answer is 4.83 times 10 to the 6 meters per second directly, oops, meters per second squared, directly away from the center of the square. And uh, that's our answer. For uh, SAC 204, number